You have the integral from zero to infinity, sine squared x over x squared dx. And I believe I've done this one quite a few times before, maybe once or twice. And we're gonna do an alternative method today. Now this one, you may already know the answer. It's kind of a very common form. And if you did it with Lobachevsky's integral, it's also really fast. This is gonna be just pi squared over two, or sorry, just pi over two. I think when I've done this in the past, I've done it with Lobachevsky's integral formula, Feynman's trick, Laplace transforms. So I guess this would be the fourth way. What I want to do is use this formula that I've derived in a previous video. I'll provide a link to that in the description. There's also another way to write this formula. I covered that in the video too. So there's an alternative way to express this that sometimes I prefer. But in this one, I think we'll go with this where we'll just have, we'll kind of equate our integral to this form here, f of x times g of x. So to do it, how I'll, how I'll break it up is for the f of x value, I'm going to call that sine squared x. And then for our g of x, that's going to be this one over x squared. Now in our formula, when we do this, you'll notice we're using a different variable inside here. We've got this function in terms of t, function in terms of s, but with this t variable and this s variable, it doesn't really matter what you choose. What matters is what's coming out of this. The output of this, it does need to be x if we're gonna be integrating with x. I mean, of course you could change that as well. So, so all these variables can be switched around as long as you're consistent with it. So if our sine squared x is the f of x, Let's just set it up for this. And so I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call my f of t equal to sine squared t. And then for the g, we'll call this g of s, and we'll do it as one over s squared because that's gonna be easy to get an inverse Laplace transform. But now before I plug this back in here, I'm actually gonna transform it because I don't really know how to get the Laplace transform of sine squared t. But what we can do is we can reduce the power using this formula, using this trig identity, we can write it as one half one minus cosine of two t. So what I'll do is plug this in here. And so what's gonna happen, now we're going from zero to infinity, the one half I can bring in front, I can bring out of the Laplace transform as a constant. And then we have all this stuff here. And then for the g of s part, we're gonna want the inverse Laplace of just one over s squared. And this is all gonna be dx. So I think we can get rid of all this now that we have the integral that we wanna solve here in the Laplace transform stuff we need to do. So then from here, I could take the one half out front as a constant, and then now for the Laplace transform, and actually, let's just show how this works. So let's break this up as we can break it on the minus sign and write it as Laplace of one minus Laplace of cosine t. Okay, so then we'll just go ahead with these Laplace transforms. So first, plugging in over here, Laplace of one, this is usually one over s, but remember, we want everything to come out as x, so this is gonna become one over x. And so our formula for this is s over s squared plus a squared, where a is just one. So this is gonna end up being, we don't want s, we want x, so this is gonna be x over x squared plus one squared, or just one. Then for this inverse Laplace, we can kind of use this formula over here, but going in reverse, so then when, if we have a two here on the exponent, to make that happen here, we just need n equal to one. Then this is gonna become exactly one over s squared. So you have the n value one here, so this would be the same thing as t to the one, but we want everything in x, this is gonna be just x, and then we'll have a dx on the end. And I definitely noticed a mistake. When we simplified sine squared, sine squared, that's, that simplifies to one minus cosine two t. I don't know if I wrote it that way originally, but this, I don't know if I wrote it that way originally, but this needs to be a 2t here. And then we have this formula over here for the Laplace transform of cosine at. We want a squared, so we want that 2 squared. So right here, so this needs to be 2 squared or a plus 4. But then I could just take this x here and distribute it back into these terms. If I do that over here, this one's going to become x over x, and this one's going to become x squared. But then in order to set this up, what if I just... If I add a plus four here, then we've created another one. I don't want to change it, so I'm going to subtract one. But then let's split this off in a separate fraction. So doing that, I need to distribute in this minus sign. So minus times minus is plus, so we're going to end up with plus four over x squared plus four here. But then just notice that this right here is a one, this is a one, one minus one, this whole thing here is just going to be a big zero. So get rid of this, simplify, four times a half is gonna be a two out front, and we're integrating from zero to infinity of just dx over x squared plus four. 
And then this right here, just the arctan formula. So we're gonna have two. This look at this like, this will be like two squared. So this is gonna be like one half in front, arctan, x over two, evaluated from zero to infinity. Two times a half is one. Arctan is zero, is nothing. Plug in infinity, and for my final solution, we just get pi over two. So there you go. I think it's a great formula, but I just don't have that many integrals I can use it on because in order to use it, you need to have the convergence. You need to have something you can take a Laplace transform on, something you can take an inverse Laplace transform on. And I think it's just hard to get all three of those in the same integral. So that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.